Darvin Ham, fired. Get him out of here. Even Wilder, it's been reported that Rob Polinka did it on the <clears> phone. <throat> Couldn't even meet with Buddy in person. That's disrespectful. Hey, man. You had to go. I'm not going to lie. You had to go. I don't care how you did it. I don't care if you sent him a letter in the mail. You had to go, bro. Honestly, I never was the type to be like a scapegoat the coach type of person. Like, granted, I'm not even a LeBron fan, so the whole, like, LeBron-led teams just get the coaches fired. That's never been me because I'm, I'm like, I'm a Lakers fan, not a LeBron fan, so I don't really care about none of that. But Frank Vogel, I never was like, oh, get Frank Vogel out of here. He's a huge mm-hmm. problem, like. Bro, we won a championship with Frank Vogel. Like, you got to be decent to, you to win a, to win we'll a championship. Talk, we'll talk about Frank Vogel, too. We right, right. Him. So, like, that, to me, that's just never – like, I've never been the type to be like, oh, something goes wrong, instantly the coach. With that being said, I'm so glad they got Darvin him out of here, bro. Because, listen, I just want to say there's a lot of things that went, went wrong with the season or a lot of people that can take some blame. Now, to me, I feel like – Darvin Ham is definitely top two because I think that the lack of adjustments, mm-hmm. the lack of just smart rotations and then just proper rotations, uh, as far as just like people subbing in and out of the lineups that he have on the court, and the lack of him having common sense to call a timeout yeah. when the other team is on a run. Yeah, piss me off so much to a point where I'm like, bro, like, please, like, you got to wake up, bro. Like, you ever see the meme where they're like, um, Darvin him call a timeout and he's like, chill, I'm watching the game. Like, that's what it feel like. <laughs> I swear, I swear he's like, bro, I'm just I'm just chill. I'm a fan. I'm just watching the game. That's what it feels like, bro. Like the amount of times and I guess we'll get into it more when we talk about the Lakers uh, getting eliminated in general. Um. The third quarter, Nuggets going to run, which is to be expected at this point. But, like, when the run starts, boom, call a timeout. When they're in the middle of the run, boom, call a timeout. I watched this guy last game legit wait until the Nuggets took the lead and then was like, ah, oh, let me call the timeout now. What's the point now? It's like, too what's, it's too late. They already got the momentum. They already have the lead now, bro. Like, that type of stuff like, definitely pissed me off. And, I mean, it's a little bit tough because he is still a young head coach. Like, this is only his second season uh, ever coaching. But, some like, something had to change, bro. Something had to change. And like I said, I don't think it was, like, just completely Darvin Ham's fault through and through. Um, Because I do think roster construction-wise, like, granted, I I thought we had a good roster. Don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming it on, like, oh, we never had the pieces to compete. I just think that we didn't do it as smart as we could have as far Mm -hmm. as another big man in there um and honestly in general since we won the championship in 2020 breaking like that was the formula and then to stray away from that all these years has always been on the front office so Mm -hmm. to me i think number one is is the front office from that aspect i love it i love it but they've done better things to kind of make up for it to the point where darvin ham gets most of the blame but in reality i i think it's the front office's fault from ever straying away from what worked in 2020 and even in 2021, I feel like in 2021, if we don't, if they don't get hurt, like who knows what happens? Like it's just like they had one injury riddled season, got bounced in the first round, saw the Nets get James Harden, and instantly panic. It was like, oh my god, we need Russell Westbrook. Like right. let's just break, trade everybody, trade our role players, and get Russell Westbrook. That's a front office fault. The fact that they made up for it as far as like getting him out of here, bringing D'Lo in, bringing Vando in, that still kind of messed up that season because they were playing from behind that whole season and then we're still like we got rid of key role players with the russell westbrook trade like it was just um it just is a bunch of things but ultimately i think who's to blame would be the front office and then darvin ham um and there's some of us i mean a lot of it, a, a little bit of it is on the players as well i think that's the the top two right there so in general i'm glad to see darvin ham gone if i had to if i had 100 percent of the blame to distribute for what has happened in LA. Off rip, probably like 70% has to go to the front office. Right. And like off the strength of that, that makes me feel like this Darvin Ham firing is making him out to become the scapegoat. But when we look at um the Lakers tenure with LeBron, A, I've seen people start to already like 
pull back out and like try to view it since it's been what five, four, four or five years now that he's been there. Mm-hmm. And like try to be like, well, is his tenure a failure or a success? That's dumb. At the end of the day, he won a ring. Like, all right, that's dumb. Stop it. The other seasons, whatever. You won a ring. That's what you are like. If you asked any other fan base, if they had a five window period and they were able to get one ring, they would be happy. They would be content. If like, you win, I don't care. If, I, bro, I really don't care if you're the worst team in the league the other four years, bro. If you win a ring, it's a, it's a success, bro. Right. This is what I will say, though. Like you mentioned, them making the decision to trade for Russell Westbrook has mortgaged their current roster, and they're still dealing with the effects from that. Mm-hmm. I disagree with you. I don't think that Darvin Ham is necessarily – it's not to say that he is blameless. No one in the organization is blameless. I do think that the personnel that he has, like, I genuinely like sat, especially because now it's been multiple days since the series have been over. I've sat and I've thought, like, really, what else could I have wanted him to do? What else could I have wanted the Lakers to do in that series to be more competitive? Because it was, it felt eerily similar to the series last year, where in every single game the Lakers have a lead. The Lakers are in every single game, all the way down to the literal very end. It took two different Jamal Murray game winners for the Nuggets to win two games in this series. So it's not like y'all are getting the break speed off we all, but at the same time you're going up against a the defending champions from last year who bounced y'all out in the Western Conference Finals last year. And this year, y'all draw them in the first round. And that's my pick to win the NBA championship again this year. Would this? Would we even be having this conversation if it was a, an inverse of last season? Or not an inverse, a repeat. Like, if the Lakers matched up a different way and met Denver in the Western Conference Finals again, and all these games played out the same way. They, they lost in five, but it was a competitive five-game series. Do you think Darvin Ham would be fired? I, I just think, yeah, because I think the change needs to be made. I th- I mean, you're saying so if they met in, like, the Western Conference Finals this year? Right. Like, let's say, like, that it was the same same type of story as last year. Like, the Lakers come out of the play and they get all the way to the Western Conference Finals, the Nuggets are rolling, y'all meet again in the Western Conference Finals, and you could have the exact same series. You have the five-game series. Every single game is close. You blow some big leads, but, like, you're in every single game. Do you think Darvin Ham still gets fired in that that instance? There's a higher chance he doesn't, but there's also a good chance that he does off the strength of people just calling for his job, saying like something needs to change. Like so, I I definitely see what you mean from that aspect. It would be a it definitely would be a little bit different from the uh, media's viewpoint because it's like mm-hmm. then it goes from you guys got bounced in the first round, something needs to change to Darvin Ham got you to two Western Conference Finals. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you lost to – especially if they go on to win the championship, then it might – I see what you mean. It might be more of like a you're just not better than Denver type of thing. I yeah, just think – And I think that that's a – like, genuinely, that's a fair way to view it. And that's how I really view the series. I literally was talking to somebody the other day, and they asked me about the Lakers and Denver series, and he was like, you know, I've never, I've never been huge on AD. And I cut him off, and I was like, I – genuinely believe this is one of the best playoff series Anthony Davis has ever played. Anthony and Davis. It was, it was a five game series and he they lost four to one. And I think this is one of the best series he's ever played. See the, the, to me that's the reason why I give Darvin him a little bit more of the blame. Because if you look at it from this aspect of like Anthony Davis played one of the best playoff series he's ever played, right? He played fantastic. Granted, like mm-hmm. sometimes in the fourth quarter he disappeared a little bit, but he just as far as well, not sometimes old, it was like yeah. three games. Yeah I'm uh, cutting him some slack. But like Overall, I feel like he played a fantastic series. Mm-hmm. Um, doing, uh, to me, doing what I asked him to do of like, look, if Jokic is going to kill you on the defensive end because he's going to do that to everyone, like no one's going to stop Jokic, you have right. to attack him on the off on when you're on offense and make him work a little bit. He was aggressive offensive or scoring wise. He was great. Defense has always been there. Um, like he played great. You know what you're going to get from LeBron. Um, obviously, like the role players didn't play their best series, but it's like you instead of having like D'Lo who absolutely disappeared. The last uh, Western Conference Finals, he at least gave you some games and some moments where he played well. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I say it's to me, a lot of it is a huge coaching mismatch is because they were up at like first half. The Lakers was great. They were great. And then what it was every after, game, every game. 
every single game. And what was it after halftime when adjustments are made? The the switch just flipped. Now, granted, I still don't get me wrong. I think that the Nuggets are just a better team. Like, don't I don't think it's like Lakers are here, Nuggets are here, and coaching just got a, a mismatch. Like, no, I think them Denver is better. But I think that the coaching mismatch was also huge, and it showed in the fact that every time in the third quarter after halftime is when they started to make their run. So to me, that's why I feel like Darvin Ham should get. Like I said, I, I think the front office gets like first of the blame, but I think Darvin Ham is right there second. Um, because I just, I I don't think. Don't get me wrong. I think the 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 Denver Nuggets are better, but I don't think it's as bad as it was mm-hmm. last year. I swear, like this year felt I agree. different as far as like even you probably seen that stat going around like Lakers led for I don't know how many more. Yeah, they they were up for a significantly more of the games than exactly than Denver was. Just could not execute, which comes down to. Don't get me wrong, coaching, but also Nikola Jokic because he is the, the was the best player on the court. So you can yep. now you can't just discredit that. But to me, like I said, I don't think the talent discrepancy was as big this year as it was last year, and that could be due to I don't know more rest, a healthier LeBron, just an overall better Anthony Davis, whatever it may be. I just don't think the talent was as big of a difference mm-hmm. as even like the final record of the series show in like right. five one. My uh, my biggest thing with this firing is I, I don't know what what other lineup Darwin could have thrown out. What other like what other adjustments could he have really tapped into? And like maybe I'm giving him too much slack, but like I'm really trying to sit here and be rational and think like he he's tried AD on Jokic, he's tried Rui on Jokic. Vanderbilt is hurt. Christian Wood is hurt. We don't have those guys at the option. There's literally no other big bodies on the roster outside of Jackson Hayes, and I don't like Jackson Hayes and AD on the floor at the same time. It's like he's tried everything he could, I think, on Jokic. We got good games out of D'Angelo Russell, and then we got absolute sinkers out of D'Angelo Russell, and then D'Angelo Russell turned into a little prima donna in, what was it, game four or game five, Mm -hmm. where he just didn't want to be a part of the huddle? like. You want to talk about coaching there, maybe, but like at the end of the day, that's D'Angelo Russell kind of being a diva. Um, like there are so many other things that I feel like have gotten chalked up to Lakers coaches getting fired. Like obviously it started with Luke Wall, and then they bring in Frank Vogel, then they get rid of Frank Vogel, they bring in Darvin Ham, and now Darvin Ham is out, and now you're looking at a short list of guys. One of the people I've seen getting thrown to those conversations. Is his podcast buddy JJ that's, Reddick? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, to potentially become the the next head coach for the Lakers, but like, how many times can you be like, "We'll just get a new coach. We'll just get a new coach. We'll just get a new coach." If nothing's changing, like you got rid of Luke Walton in the very first year, then you made the Anthony Davis trade, then you won a championship, and then Rob Polinka said. Well, all the things that helped us win that championship, Kyle Kuzma, KCP, Al Caruso. Caruso. Yeah. Bye-bye. Um, We're mm-hmm. going to bring in Russell Westbrook because like some of these other GMs or owners, like we'll get to, they oh, got to yeah. have the big three. They got to have the third star. And y'all are still paying the consequences of that trade from a personnel perspective. So I just feel like I don't know what more Darvin Ham genuinely could have done. He coached him to a Western Conference Finals lost to the what ended up being the the champions granted it was a sweep but it was a it's one of the you really can't get a sweep much closer than that the following year you go out of the plan you match up with the exact same team and it's almost identical series like is a five game series instead of a sweep but every single game was close execution down the stretch matters a ton yes you can play some of that on darvin but at the end of the day, and I said this when we were talking in the playoffs last year about uh, Joel Embiid, Doc Rivers could not get on the court and give Joel Embiid the ball. He couldn't get on the court and make Joel Embiid get the ball in his hands in the post. When it was game seven against the Celtics and he didn't have a post touch for the last five minutes after he was literally unguardable the whole game. There's multiple games in this series where Anthony Davis is going at Jokic, and Jokic just he, he's not going to get himself in foul trouble. He's too valuable. So how is it that we keep getting to these fourth quarters where the LeBron and Anthony Davis pick and roll, the, the Nuggets just don't seem to have an answer to it. 
and then we're like getting away from it. We're not even forcing them to make a real adjustment. Like they're just trying different things. They maybe swap KCP and Aaron Gordon. And it's like, we're just not even trying it anymore as a, like, if you're the Lakers, um, Anthony Davis's aggression drops off a cliff um, in the fourth quarter in multiple games of the series. Like, I just think there's so much more here that Darvin Ham is just becoming the scapegoat, which it happens. It's going to happen in other places this offseason. It might happen in Phoenix, um, which is unfortunate. It's a reality of really the sports business. It's always going to be a what have you done for me lately type of thing. And so going back to that initial point about, you know, people really viewing this Lakers stint with LeBron, this, you know, five-year stretch is like, okay, he won the ring in the bubble. But since then it's been, was it first round exit against Phoenix and then Western conference finals and they lose against Denver. And then now you lose against Denver again. And so you feel like a change has to happen. I just don't know if bringing in a new coach and this is the, the roster that y'all are going to field makes a big difference. The The thing that gets me even more is, you know, Rob Palinka talks about now they have those three first round picks that they're going to move to get additional talent. And so then if you go out and get a new coach and then you also bring in a better, you know, one or two complimentary pieces, like who's to say that Darvin Ham couldn't have been better with those pieces? Like I just, it's, it's tough. And I get where you're coming from. I just feel like it, it feels very, like they had to put the blame somewhere and it's almost always goes to the coach because you're not going to get LeBron out of there. You're not going to get AD out of there. The next guy that falls in line is going to be LeBron. I'm about to kill this spider that is crawling on my wall. <laughs> One tapped him, but <laughs> <One t> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's my biggest thing with the whole, the whole Darverham thing. This is now going to be the fourth coach. If LeBron stays in LA, um, it's now going to be the fourth coach that he's, he's played under in, What's going on his sixth year, right? Um, this would be going into the sixth year, I think, right? Right. So mm -hmm. it, it just feels like, you know, we're, we're y'all are getting repetitive with what you think the answer is. And I think I talked about it on literally the last podcast. Like, again, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you're going to go through now your fourth coach to think that something is really going to change about this organization – it just doesn't seem like that's really making a difference. So yeah, I I so like my thing is I think that two things could be true at once. I think that them taking the approach of disappointing season firing the coach has been a bad thing for them to do, and also in this particular situation, he needed to go because I agree with you. I think that, like I said, Luke Walton, that like I I agree with what you're saying. It's like all right. We made the Anthony Davis trade. Oh my God, we have a better season. Like obviously, we probably brought right. in Anthony Davis. Like this wasn't like oh Frank Gold Frank Vogel just unlocked something. Like no, right. Like, same thing you said about Darvin Ham. Who's to say with Luke Walton like that couldn't have happened? Same thing with Frank Vogel. Is like we win the win the championship. Have it literally have like an in, like basically an excuse. Like bro, we're injured in the first round. That's like we lost that series. We're injured completely blow it up and fire Frank Vogel. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. But also, Darvin Ham, I don't think that this series got – I don't think this series got him fired. Mm -hmm. I think that it was just a, a collection of everything. Because there's people calling for his job when they made it to the Western Conference Finals, saying that they don't that like is, the rotations, yep. saying that they don't like him, like, not calling timeout. Like, they were already calling for his job then. Right. The fact I, I want to I want to make sure it's clear. I'm not out here saying that Darvin Ham is – an elite coach by any stretch of the nah, I, feel you. <laughs> I just don't feel like he's like that is the change that needs to happen that's really gonna really flip the switch or how these Lakers seasons have been going I could very easily see y'all bring in a new coach and then you end up with the same result Absolutely. and y'all are keeping this cycle of like oh well we got to get rid of the coach and it's like yeah. <laughs> there has to be bigger changes that happen than that no I feel you 100% I just think that with this one specifically like I said I've I've never been the type. I don't think I've ever once said Frank Vogel has to go. I don't think I've ever said that. And like I said, with all these other LeBron teams, I wasn't a LeBron fan, so I kind of didn't really care of what happened to their coach. But with Darvin Ham, it's like even people are calling for a job when it's like we're starting Torian Prince over Rui and we're losing games and we got a lineup that 
got us to the Western Conference Finals last year that we're not running. Like like I said, it's just a collection of everything. So I don't think that this series is the main thing that got him fired. Because honestly, like I said, as far as rotations wise, he wasn't really doing anything that was horrible in this series. Um, like I said, to me, the biggest things were the lack of adjustments and mm-hmm. the fact that, bro, they're going on a run, call a timeout. Like that's right, the main yeah. that really is the main thing that was pissing me off. I'm like, bro, call a timeout. But um, but yeah, in general, I, I think that I do agree with you that just the constant repetitiveness of firing the coach and hoping that stuff is gonna change is just it's not the answer. But I also think that this was needed. Mm-hmm.